Hey guys, welcome back to SimTech channel. So I've got with me a, a mini solar lamp, right? It's a, basically an emergency solar lamp. Okay, so as you can see right here, I've got this small mini solar module here. That's why it's called mini. And I've got an LED board here with the motion sensor, as you can see right there. There is a switch on it, right? To basically turn this on or off. But mind you, because there is a motion sensor, it can actually turn off itself, even though you can leave the switch on. So as you can see, I turn it on, it goes off, it will come back on again, precisely because they take where it needs to be in functionality. Now, the way this operates is that as soon as it detects a light source on this panel here, this module here, it's supposed to turn the light off, then start charging the battery. That's how I'm saying it. Great, so now let me bring the light source here. There's a small torch here. I'm going to shine the light on the panel and you're going to realize that the torch went off as soon as I brought the light on it. I remove the light, the panel comes back on. Torch on, light, torch off, torch on. So this is basically how this operates. Now, now notice that I do not have light on it, but the torch went off nevertheless. And that is precisely because this thing also has a motion sensor. There is no more motion. So what I have to now do to activate this light is to basically wave just around it for it to come back on so that the motion sensor can detect my motion. So now that is for optimum because it is running off a battery. Now let me turn this off so that we can go ahead and open it up and see how it is wired internally. Great. So let me open this. I've already opened the screws on it. So it's easy for us. You can see there is a battery attached to it. That is a 3.2 battery. And now that battery is designed to be charged by this solar module here. You can see also there is a small circuit board here that we're going to discuss more about this PCB. And the switch, as you can see there, the switch is basically meant to connect the circuit with the battery right now the panel here is connected directly to the battery but there is a small diode here actually this big diode you can see now that diode is there to for protection because we do not want to be pushing power from the battery to the small module right there okay now there is the led board that you can see here the led board as we can see here they are all mounted or basically connected in parallel so this is designed so that it can all work from the single 3.3 volt battery here. Now, as I've demonstrated here, that this thing only work when there is no light source onto this panel here. So, which means the panel is only meant to basically charge the battery. So, as soon as there is a voltage across the module here that's able to trigger the circuit, so that basically disconnect the battery from the circuit and it start charging it. So basically the light will go off. So that basically what this circuit is doing here. Great, so I've done some reverse engineering here, tracing up this circuit to basically find out what kind of schematic diagram we've got here, which is very simple. There is a diode here and we've got some biasing resistor for these two transistors and there is another transistor for driving the LEDs. Now on the LED circuit here, I haven't drawn the circuit. It's pretty simple that uh, we've got these LEDs mounted in parallel and I've got transistors that are basically connected together to basically drive them. So that's a pretty simple uh, circuit there. They're just expecting a voltage high enough to turn them on. So which means the bulk of this circuit here is to detect the module uh, voltage, okay? Disconnect the battery disconnect the circuit and start charging this battery here. The circuit is very simple here, as you guys can see. Now we've got basically what? Three transistors, a diode, and a couple of resistors here. Now the main big component here is a diode that is a DC blocking diode. Now this diode is designed to protect the, the basically the solar cells here from this 3.2 volt battery. Because the solar cell, as you know, the voltage will be dependent on the light source. So which means at times it will definitely be less than the 3 volt of the battery. So you do not want the battery pushing back voltage into the solar cell. That is why we've got that big 
diode right there to perform that task for us. And the transistors are there to control the switching when we detect enough voltage for the solar cells from the solar cell and then we stop the circuit. Then we turn off the LED and start charging the battery. Great. Now let's go ahead and take a look at what I've managed to draw out of this circuit here. Now, before we can start discussing uh, this schematic diagram, please, if you find this a uh, quick tutorial useful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to Simtech channel. That will be highly appreciated. And I thank you so very much. Great. Now you can see this light turned off here because it has a motion sensor. I have to put my hand there to bring the light on. And that is all designed to ensure that this battery lasts longer. Because it cannot just sit uh, right there idling without activity and the light keeps on running. So if you are not moving anymore, the light is going to turn off. Great. So this is the approximate circuit that we've got here. Not exactly 100%, but it's very much close to what we've got on this board here. Okay. So S plus and S minus are the connection for the solar module. And the B plus and B minus are our battery's connection. Great. So there is a switch that we spoke earlier on to turn this module on and off. So that is this switch here. Great. So now let's take a look at what exactly is happening in this circuit here. Okay. So now we know that when there is a light source, right, available on the solar module here, there will be a voltage that will develop across it. Now that voltage will cause R1 and R2 to have a voltage divider here that will then bias Q1 at the base. Now when Q1 turns on, okay, it will bring this point here to zero, okay? Q2 will then turn off. Now when Q2 turn off, we're basically going to have this resistor. This 100K will be to ground. So basically these two acting as a voltage divider to this base of these uh, PNP transistor, right? We know that in order to turn off these uh, PNP transistor, that is when the LEDs are going to turn off. Now to turn off the PNP transistor, the base voltage here must be higher than the emitter voltage. So that basically what is happening here when Q2 is turned off. When Q2 is turned off, we basically raising this point here we raise this point higher than this point and that's turn off q3 and when q3 turn off the leds obviously they won't have no more source of current and automatically that same power from the solar module is going to start charging the battery here via d1 so as soon as this uh, voltage drops again, right, when there is no more presence of light source, basically it's dark. So that voltage drop and automatically Q2 here turns on again, right, because Q1 is now turned off. Okay, when Q2 turns on, we're bringing this point here lower. Okay, this point is dropping and this point is rising. So when this point rises, assuming the switch is closed and automatically we're going to have the led turning on so this is basically how this circuit operate here now if i bring my light source you can see that the light is going off i take it away the light is coming back on and this is being done by this transistor uh, being biased and turning off and on and basically allowing for power to flow through the leds now, I've wired the circuit on protoid simulations just to try to confirm exactly what is happening. Now, let's take a look at that very quickly. Now, let's go ahead and run the simulation. Great. Now, you can see that uh, the potentiometer here is simulating the presence of the voltage across these two resistors here, R4 and R5, as per our schematic diagram. Now, right now, you can see the LEDs are basically on, okay? So, the LEDs are on. Let's turn over here, okay? The LEDs are on. Now, when I bring a light source, the LED goes off, okay? Now, observe the voltage at the base of Q3. Now, this voltage, as we've already uh, uh, discussed, that it has to be uh, higher than this voltage for this uh, transistor to turn off. Now, as I increase the light source here, basically try to increase the light source, 
you can see that this point here is starting to increase okay the point is starting to increase it started to increase as soon as the point get to 2.4 now the transistor is turned off and the leds basically turned off as well now you have to drop your light source from the panel okay for this point to get lower than this point for the transistor to turn back on and at the same time you can see that the voltage across r4 and r5 is also dropping you can see that when this voltage drop to zero that's one here it's sitting at 0 0.6 that basically turn on q q2 but now when i go on this way you can see that this uh, is rises to 0 0.6 turning on this one and this becomes zero and it turn off q2 and so on and so on so this is basically how this circuit is operating light source no light source light source no light source but if you also leave it for a while without uh, activities right there is no motion it's going to go off all right you have to bring your hand or it has to detect some activities and then turn the light on now this is necessary for optimum because remember this thing is running on battery at time where the light only goes off when it starts charging the battery so you cannot use it when it's charging the battery right so that is basically how this thing is operating you can see that there is a motion sensor here that's the motion sensor okay that needs to detect whether there is motion or not so it's a very uh, intelligent design interesting uh, simple emergency light here so we're going to stop the tutorial here thank you guys for watching if you found it useful interesting please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to simtech channel that will be highly appreciated until next time stay tuned for more tutorial of this nature